For years, these have been my go-to affordable drives, but with a recent high failure rate, I started to look for another option, and here's what I found. This is TerraMaster's USB-C 4 Thunderbolt 5 compatible D1 external NVMe SSD enclosure, which allows you to expand your system's capacity in a very simple way. The package contents provide everything to set up the D1, plus something I've never seen before, a promise of an additional six month warranty if you're not satisfied within the first 30 days of purchase, which is pretty snazzy. It's clearly not like other products on the market. Basically, this is a giant passive NVMe heatsink with a low density design. The fins are thicker and more widely spaced out to create a larger area for heat dissipation and improved airflow. The minimalist design makes adding an SSD super easy. It just has one screw here, which when loosened, allows you to open the case. The screw is captured, so you won't lose it, which is a nice addition. And with no moving parts, there's nothing to break, and it also means that it operates without generating noise. On the inside, TerraMaster has pre-installed a thin thermal pad, but it also ships with a separate one in case you have a slimmer SSD. Like many of the external hard drive enclosures on the market today, the D1 uses an M key slot and supports mainstream widely available 2280 drives up to PCI 4x4 in spec. Now I'm going to install my test drive here, which is only a single sided NAND layout. But if you're wondering if the D1 can support double sided layout, larger capacity drives like four and eight terabyte, I'm happy to report that there's plenty of space and the D1 fully supports the use of larger drives. But let's rip this apart and see what we actually have here. Now, after removing the PCB, I was pleasantly surprised to find a large amount of SMB capacitors on it. Usually a large number of capacitors like this are used with top of the line enterprise SSDs to stabilize voltage, provide power failure protection, and ensure data safety. So TerraMaster really has backed up their marketing claims with this level of data security protection. They have also used an ASM2464 PD chip underneath the capacitor, which is capable of delivering USB 4 transfer speeds and is compatible with USB 3.2 and Thunderbolt 3 ports. Now to deal with all the heat that this tech generates, TerraMaster has also CNC'd out the chassis and added a small thermal pad to bond the chip and case's heat dissipation properties. Now this all sounds great on paper, but how does it perform in the real world? Well, when connected to my M1 Mac Mini, the combo easily benches at speeds that suggest that I can use it as a Resolve 20 scratch disk, a Rodecaster Pro drive because it makes zero sound, or even as a simple time machine backup. Whichever one I choose, the three best things about it are, first, it delivers the advertised speeds. Second, it runs silent and does not get hot. Even when I transferred a large amount of data to it, the drive just remained at a constant degree Celsius. Plus when tested under full Resolve 8K editing load, it didn't choke, I had no stuttered playback, and I saw no difference in heat buildup, and my office is not air conditioned. So my experience so far is the passive cooling design works really well. So this is a viable Resolve editing disc, but unfortunately due to its size, I wouldn't consider it a portable device when compared to say, my four terabyte pocket drive. The pocket drive runs slightly slower, but it is one quarter the size and is a fraction of the weight. And if you're doing shoots outdoors where every gram of weight that you have to carry matters, you may want to consider an alternative because this is stout for its size. I also would not recommend to use this with cameras or iPhones as an external disc for the exactly the same reasons. It's large and heavy, but also because it has an additional power draw at around eight watts. There are far better options on the market available like this from Condor Blue and Angel Bird for that exact type of application. But as for office use, as a silent editing disc, this is unbeaten. I like that I can choose the brand of NVMe I use inside it, that it requires no software to perform, and really what I get out of it depends on the drive I put in it. TerraMaster even ship it with a Thunderbolt 5 compliant cable that supports 80 gigabits of bandwidth, meaning when I finally upgrade my M1, I should see a further benefit from the D1. But I do have two small recommendations for TerraMaster. What I would like to see is a dual or quad version of this with two separate USB-C ports that can be rated together so I can double the storage and the bandwidth from a single device. I would also like to see TerraMaster offer longer cables as my computer is rack mounted 
and the included cable is too short. So I've been using these ones from Angelbird, which are far longer, made from better materials and deliver the same speeds. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.